Hello there. Welcome to another checkmate pattern video. This time around, it's the blind swine mate. Now, what the hell does that mean? What do swines have to do with chess? Well, apparently, this checkmate pattern got its name from a Polish grandmaster who referred to a pair of rooks on the seventh rank that could not find mate as blind swine. So this is the blind swine mate. So these are the two swines, or as some people call it, the pigs on the seventh. And this combination of these two rooks on the seventh against the black king is very strong and will very often lead to mate. If you can cover the f8 square, you're going to have mate. And the best way to do this is to give a check, then another check. And then you bring both rooks and we have this checkmate position, the blind swine mate. So we need some assistance here. We need a rook on f8 to cover the square. We could also cover the square with a piece. It could be a long range, a long range bishop, it could be a knight. But this is the blind swine mate. Now the most famous example of this has to be from the world championship match between Mikhail Chikorin and Wilhelm Steinitsch. Perhaps the worst blunder in world championship history. Chikorin with white pieces played the astonishingly bad move, bishop to b4. Completely losing his focus because the bishop is covering h2 and he played this move. Yes, he attacks the rook, but the other rook gives check, and we have the blind swine mate. Chikorin resigned because, well, you don't want to get mated in a world championship match, especially by blind swines. Now, before we look at some, some further examples, this is a very important theme, by the way. And we're going to look at the uh, game here, and uh, we're going to enter the game. In the middle game, this is a game between Alexander Alikan and Fred uh, Yates. And very quickly, we see uh, a, a trait of, of dark squared bishops here. And the theme after this move b5 is that white is going to be dominating completely on dark squares. And he's got an open file. Now, what does open file have to do with our theme? Well, what do we want to do with an open file? And this is very important chess strategy. When you have an open file, very often the end goal is to get control of the seventh rank. Get your rooks on the seventh. So keep that in mind. When you have an open file, you're trying to control it so that you can later control the seventh rank. And here the combination of the dark square domination by Alekhine and the, the occupation of a C file is almost immediately decisive. Rook after C1, controlling the C file. Bishop a6, now controlling the dark squares. The h tries to push on the queen side, but notice all white's pieces on dark squares. h6, and like a true Russian master. The Soviet chess school, don't rush, bring your king. Eventually we're going to use the h pawn as well. King f2, we bring the king. Yates can't really do anything. Now the king comes somewhat over to f4 eventually. Bishop e5, rook 1 to c5, bishop a6. Some posturing with the rooks here. Uh, black has to defend. And now king to f4, like complete domination. White already has the rook on the 7th. So now the next goal is to control the 7th rank. King g8, first h5, just securing all the squares. Sort of asserting the domination, bishop f1, just, you know, this is just a, a mild scratch, we'll just play g3, game on, more pieces on dark squares, and now rook f7, getting ready to hit him where it hurts on the 7th, and here it comes, rook c to c7, so black is in a world of hurt, and now Alekhan finished a nice game with knight to d7, immediately threatening to win an exchange with knight f6 check. Yates got out of the uh, fork, but Alekhan can still do it because 
if you take it's mate so he moved the rook intending to take on g7 but after the masterful last move king to e5 black was signed because well how do you save this rook there are two ways you can move it back to f8 or you can move the other rook to f8 to defend the rook in both cases you move something to f8 and that's precisely what we need in our pattern the blind swine mate and now when the f8 square is covered we have this mate and this is what Ali Khan would have done to finish the game now the knowledge of, of this pattern very often results in some some easy but nice tactics including this one by Vasil Ivanchuk fully aware of the power of the rooks on the seventh similar to what Alikan did but one rank to the side he played knight into e6 hitting the rook and sort of combined the blind swipe mate and kind of a kind of a shifted uh, Arabian mate rook takes f7 now if you take there's going to be a check this is if we ignore the h file which is just like an arabian mate so a shifted arabian mate but the key was the blind swan mate knight e6 and you can't take the knight sorry i was actually going to take the knight because then we execute the blind swan mate so knight e6 was the key move there here we're just going to see a typical setup to well very similar to what Ivanchuk did there's h6 here but he took on e6 rook fc8 uh, if you take it queen g4 you can't do anything rook f7 rook takes king takes and rook here and eventually we we penetrate with our pieces heavy pieces so rook f2 c8 was tried queen f3 pressure on f7 the rook went actually back and now queen g3 g6 and now can you finish the job the setup is ready i think you you felt it and you're absolutely right queen sacrifice queen takes g6 has to be taken because otherwise mate f takes rook g7 check king to the corner and now takes on the seventh now there's no way to interpose anything on the seventh rank our knight is not covering a square where a rook can go to the rooks would just be captured and notice that we have a knight here if we didn't the rook could simply move to f2 and we don't don't have mate but since we're covering the square the blind swine mate is in effect there's not a rook here but we cover the square so checkmate Yeah, so look at this one. Uh, the final example I'm going to leave you with. No, first we're going to look at uh, Paul Morphy against Charles Morian. This was actually a game where uh, White sacrificed a piece in the starting position. Let's see how the game progressed. Rook takes d3, threatening uh, the lawnmower or ladder mate which we haven't covered but we will we will soon bishop a6 protecting the back rank but now rook d to d7 the rook's on the seventh bishop to c4 and now a very clever move white is not necessarily winning yet but if he's too early here let's say he plays a move like rook g7 and tries to set up a blind swan mate here then black can get counterplay with rook e1 and rook takes a2 and we can't allow that so what Morphy did here he played first a4 and black fell for it he took b takes a3 on passant but this means the rook is blocked this rook is not entering our position on a2 or a1 so now he went for it he played rook g7 king goes to the corner and now the fantastic move knight to f8 knight to f8 is fantastic because it's threatening to play knight g6 mate we can give some check it doesn't matter the king just runs and you can't do anything with just two pieces so 
So eventually you're gonna have to capture this knight to prevent this mate, but then we go for the blind swan mate. GG yo. So the final example is for you. And we move the blind swine mate to the center of the board. Your job is to construct it. Black would have a choice of losing the queen. Well, actually, in the variation where he loses the queen, he will actually get mated anyway. So your job is to build uh, a blind swine mate in the middle of the board with a series of forced moves. Good luck. Tell me the solution in the comments. And once again, keep liking the videos if you want me to keep uploading pattern videos, videos that clearly help your chess, improve your vast knowledge of the game. So if you want, to keep, want me to keep doing that, keep liking the videos and I will keep doing them. And I'll see you in the next pattern recognition video. Bye bye.